Eh, qué rollo, quiero mandar un saludo a mi amigo Goodfella, de parte de tu amigo Jaime Munguía. Un abrazo, carnal. Ánimo. All right. Up earlier than usual. Gotta shoot a move before I go to work. Work. But, yeah, Al Heyman met with Canelo. Um, they said it was Monday. I think it was yesterday, Thursday. Um, I don't know when I'm gonna post this video. But he met with him. And he told him no David Benavidez for May. And it boils down to Jamal Crawford, Terrence Crawford. I mean, she's Jamal Crawford. Jamal Charlo, Terrence Crawford, and Jaime Munguia. So I kind of get the feeling that it's going to be Munguia, and I'll explain why. But, you know, things change. He just said no Benavidez for May. Um, you know, and I talked about that interview that Marcus Villegas posted where he translated Canelo speaking in Spanish. And he basically was saying that they was asking about David Benavidez, some of the Mexican reporters, the media there. He said, you know, what about September? Maybe after that, he said. So he ain't trying to fight Benavidez. So, I mean, it is what it is. You know, some people say he earned the right to pick and choose his fights. I say, where did he earn the right at? He ain't had a hard day in boxing, bro. His hardest day in boxing was Mayweather, and he made a bunch of money. So, dude ain't had a hard day in boxing. Everything has been given to Canelo Alvarez because his distinguished look and him being aligned with uh, him being aligned with Oscar De La Hoya and Floyd Mayweather. Now, some people would dispute that. Okay, tell me what, where the fuck he earned the hard days of work at. Even when he fought Austin Trout, the open scoring was in his favor, and most people thought he lost that fight. Lord Jesus, I hate getting behind people who can't drive. <laughs> So, and most, and most of that, people felt like that was in his favor. You know what I'm saying? So, um, but nonetheless, I mean, it is what it is. You know, he said he had never fought another Mexican. I mean, you can make the, the question that, uh, you know, David Benavidez is Mexican. And then people saying he wasn't because his mother was Ecuadorian. You know, but, you know, a lot of people say the male father carries the dominant trait. So if his father Mexican, he should be Mexican. So I don't know really much, pretty much, if Mexicans, you know, adore or accept David Benavidez or not. I'm not Mexican. I ain't in the Mexican community. I let them talk about it. The Mexicans and, you know, the Canelo fanboys don't like my Canelo videos because I keep it a mean with him. But, you know, for the most part, it's down to Crawford, Munguia, and Charlo. Now, um, only, only how I see, from what I understand, this is me understanding it and assuming. So assumption can get you in trouble. What I understand, it had to be will Munguia lose the rider or, or suffer some type of damage, and Jamal Charlo's not ready. So, you know, Terrence Crawford is third in the rotation. That's my understanding of it. Terrence Crawford is third in the rotation for the fight. Now, it could be a point where Munguia do lose the rider. I mean, he damn near lost to Derbachenko. A lot of people thought Derbachenko was over the hill. You know, so it could be a case where he loses to Derbachenko. I mean, he loses to John Ryder or suffers some damage, and then Jamal Charlo not ready. So you got to understand, when you say no Benavidez, Benavidez's name ain't even in the running for May. You know, they said they may do it in September. My thing is, if, if this month, if they're going to do uh, Munguia next, then it's going to probably be Jamal in the September. My thing is, there's rumors that he could be headed back to the zone. So why not wait to go back to the zone and do it a fight with Monguia? But then again, you know, Eddie Hearn, I mean, uh, Oscar De La Hoya and Al Heyman got a better working relationship than Eddie Hearn and Oscar De La Hoya, and let alone Eddie Renasso, Canelo, and Oscar De La Hoya. So from that standpoint of view, they kind of make a bunch of sense, you know. So so these fight, these last two Canelo fights will still be showcased on Showtime. Because he has a network deal, un unlike the face of boxing, Javante is Tank and Tank Davis. So, um, but, you know, to me, it is what it is. A lot of people want to see that Crawford fight. I have no desire to see that. I understand weight classes are for a reason. The reasons that we give, the reasons that we do, do, do. I understand it. I want to see that shit. Fuck, I want to see a welterweight go up to 168. And fight Canelo Alvarez when I already know the results. Not positive. My nods was. Come on.
come on, why I need this? Why I don't need to see that shit? I want the Mexican monster. I want the Mexican monster. Come on, buddy, you can turn. Whatever you the dumb truck, bro. These dudes are out here taking their time, bro. But uh But yeah, man, that's not I mean I I you know Crawford and Jamal Charlo, that's a tough one. You know, I really see I don't know man, I really see, I don't wanna see him fight Crawford, bro. Like that's just too much size difference, bro. That's just too much size difference, bro. I want man dude, I wanna see him fight Benavidez, Bevel. I'm not gonna ask him to fight better B but I don't think that would be fair. Benavidez, Bevel, and that's it. That's it. I mean, whoever else he fight after that, I mean, I don't give a hell. Them are the two fights I want to see him fight. Bevel and Benavidez. You know? I want to see him get his big payback. Doom, doom, doom. <laughs> so, yeah, that's the fights I want to see him in. I don't want to see no Crawford. And Munguia, man, come on, man. How you going to fight Munguia? He ain't even get no title at, one, at 160. I just let you know, bro. They, these these dudes, you know, they playing four corners, man. You know, De La Hoya talking about the best need to fight the best, but Munguia won't fight for a title at 160. They try for Jamal. Why not fight Genevieve? So Canelo might fight Munguia, who couldn't get a title at 160, but could jump up and fight for Undisputed at 168. The WBO got him ranked number one in the WBO at 168. I'm just telling you, man, it's corruption, bro. The dude who bagged out of title fights. And I like Munguia. Don't get it twisted. Bagged out of title fights. How you going to fight a guy who didn't get a title in his previous weight class but jump up to 68 and fight and fight the king, King Canelo? He should have to fight a Caleb Plan or somebody like that. And that would make sense because Benavidez already knew this. Yep, yep, yep. Benavidez already knew this. You know? He already knew that. Uh, he that's why he was trying to get Munguia in the ring so damn bad, because he knew Munguia was he was gonna try to fight Munguia, and that's why, you know, he trying to get Jamal Charlo now. He said he want to fight Jamal Charlo. He trying to cut off Canelo opponents before Canelo gets to him. But Canelo gonna peep that strategy out. Al Heyman gonna show loyalty to Canelo because he show loyalty not to seniority. You know, he showed loyalty, and you know, his first step of showing loyalty is to that bag. That's why I always tell y'all it's, it's a very dangerous relationship when you're dealing with somebody that put money above everything money above they, they belief, money above their principles, money above their kids, money above their family. You know, because when you're dealing with somebody that put money above everything, bro, that means they, they'll do anything to your ass. You know, a lot of y'all be messing with these sack chasing women and they loyal to the money and they not loyal to nothing else, let alone you. What you what you think what you think the play gonna be? They gonna set your ass up. Or when the time is right, they gonna take your ass to divorce divorce court, child support court and clean you out. Same thing with homeboys. Niggas set you up and rob your whole crib and act, and act like he ain't had nothing to do with it. See, dealing with people that put money first, they don't have no morals, man. They don't have a code. The only code they got is to the money. You leave them ninjas where they be at. Because they're going to be miserable. But nonetheless, but that's how it's laying out. Now it's going to play out for him, it looks like. So, um, you know, Jamal Charlo, they should be trying to put him right back in another fight. You know, you can tell in his face he all fucked up. You can see his face sunken in and you know, in a lot of our problems, we create them ourselves, man. We really do. You know, you got to take responsibility what you did, you know, and hopefully get another opportunity said it won't happen. Talented fighter. Um, nigga had a bad 2024, but at least 2023, at least he ended off on a winning note. I feel like he posed, stopped Jose Benavidez, but there's only one man that stopped Jose Benavidez in 12 rounds. And that's the best fighter in the world right now, Terrence Crawford. 
So that's that's understandable. He had to knock him out with a punch that he didn't see coming, an uppercut. And Jamal Charlo ain't a great combination puncher. So then he had been off a couple of years. So, but you know, right now it looks like it's Munguia Charlo with Terrence Crawford. You know, as a you know the sixth man off the bench right now. So it very may well be Munguia in May, Charlo in September. It might be Charlo in May, Munguia in September. But if he do pick Munguia, you gotta wonder, do they put Charlo, Jamal Charlo in the ring with uh with Caleb Plant? Because Caleb Plant been calling him out. So you gotta wonder that. But hey, let me know what your girls and guys think, man. Thumbs up the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon button, hit all notifications, increase your chance to get notifications. We go live or drop video. Financially wanna support the channel, cash out dollar sign, CJ Good313. Memo CJ Good313. PayPal link in the description. Hit the link tree. Find me everywhere from Spotify, Anchor, Cash App, Venmo, PayPal, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, the whole nine. Uh, like I said, appreciate the love, support, man. One time for the one time. Good for the TV. Check out the box room playlist for more videos like this. Peace.